Hey, this is Ron. I hope you enjoyed this new video of a storable swimming pool. I know I've done a few of these in the past, um, but I've done this recently. This was done last month in Manalip, New Jersey, and I just got to uh, editing it now. As you can tell, I'm a little under the weather today, but I just wanted to let you know that I hope you enjoy this video. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Thank you. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken two two by six pressure treated pieces of lumber and I've screwed them together to beef up where the electrical equipment will be mounted to. So when doing these uh, storable pools, there's a lot of planning that gets involved. For instance, this um, wooden stud that I have in the ground, uh, you got to be down at least two, two feet. And the reason why you do that is because when the frost hits the earth, it'll heave out. And then two years from now, it'll be swaying from side to side and it'll look shitty. So I use the concrete here to uh, sturdy it up and that usually prevents any problems in the future. I'd say the biggest obstacle of doing this job right here was the distance uh, from the pool, not only to the house, but to where my truck is parked out on the street. There's a lot of walking back and forth, and even though you plan to bring all the tools and materials that you need, it's usually something, one or two things that you don't have, you have to go back to get. So I spent a lot of time, unfortunately, going back and forth to the truck, getting things, um, but the job did get done in a timely manner and the company did make a profit so that's important so when you put together the two pieces of conduit here what you want to do is you want to glue either side of the pipe and you want to spin it around in such a way so that all walls of the inside of the conduit have glue and have a place to adhere to each other um, now from what i understand all types of pvc underground is going to get water in it eventually so the conductors we use have to be rated um, <clears throat> to resist the water. So when you're looking at a pH piece of THHN, you'll also see a backslash and it'll say THWN. So without going into too much detail, the W in WHN stands for water resistance and that's the kind of conductors we use going through the PVC conduit underground and outside as well. And so here's what I'm talking about. We'll glue this one side here, and then we'll push the, the male end into the female end, and then we'll twist it so that the wall is completely filled with glue, and you get a better connection from piece to piece. Now, the simplest way to put this conduit in without uh, having to get into the dirt and having dirt inside the conduit is to put the conduit together first and then lay it in the trench. Sometimes this is easier than, than it looks, um, <clears throat> but it does turn out to be a better job doing it like this and it does cause uh, does take less time to actually get it into place now I always like to run my conduit runs a little bit longer and then trim them back to size so that I can stub up on either end at the house and over at the uh, swimming pool equipment so here the conduit goes around this 45 degree turns without having to heat up the conduit to make the bend or any prefab uh, connections it went around that 45 degrees no problem Okay, so here I am over by the house, and behind this wall is the garage where the circuits will be deriving from that main breaker panel that you'll see later in this video. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting a box that I will take down when I come back to this job a couple days later, and I'll drill a hole in the back of that box and feed my wires through that connector and transition from the Romex cable 
over to the THWN and the conduit pole. So in case you're wondering why I'm running two circuits out there, not just one, uh, the National Electric Code requires that the swimming pool equipment be on its own 20 amp circuit, and it also requires a convenience receptacle for service. So they can't be on the same circuit, because if the timer that's controlling the pool filter was off, then the receptacle that it was tied to would also not be on. I hope that makes sense. So we always run two circuits out there, and so the GFCI is on all the time for service and the other receptacle for the pool filter is being controlled by the timer inside the garage space. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened to the footage, but I just got the new Milwaukee fish tape that has the motor on it. So I was able to fish that through the conduit out here to the pool equipment um, for the wire pull. Uh, I'm not sure what happened, but the thing was beautiful. So here you see I got two color wires, I got two white wires, and I got one common grounding conductor going through this conduit from the swimming pool equipment back to the house. And then what I'll do, what I did here was I drilled through the lumber. So the one P so you won't see the PVC from the pool coming up out of the ground. And then I just went back to back with the uh, boxes by drilling a hole through the lumber. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm attaching this tamper-resistant and weather-resistant duplex receptacle. Uh, now remember, this is only a duplex receptacle because we're going to be installing a 20-amp GFCI circuit breaker. So therefore, the conductors are GFCI-protected and so is the receptacle. So here I'm installing a 20 amp, 125 volt twist lock receptacle. And then I'll go ahead and I'll change the male end of the cord body coming from the motor. And what this does is if there's any vibrations from that motor, it avoids pulling the um, cord out of this receptacle box. This used to be re required for above ground swimming pools. They took it out a previous couple of previous cycles of the code ago. Um, but I still put it in there and I still change out the cord body and uh, that's just the way I learned how to do it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's another safety precaution so that the filter doesn't accidentally fall out from the duplex receptacle. So that's why I continue to do it. So because I use that uh, twist lock male end right here, I got to use this extended bubble cover. So it's a little bit larger than you might be able to see. But the nice thing about it is that you can put the cord in there, put it in the locking position, close the cover, and keep any condensation out of the box, which is nice. 
uh, for when it rains, you keep the rainwater out of there. Okay, so here I am at the main breaker panel. It's a 20 circuit, 100 amp main breaker, square D QO panel, which is a nice panel. It's in good condition. It's not that old. Um, so I got to tie these circuits in. I ran two circuits. I fished them across the ceiling and down. I don't know what happened to that footage or if I didn't record it. I'm not sure what happened there. But um, <clears throat> so we're going to tie in the two circuits, and then we're also going to set up for the 24 hour time clock that'll be installed right in the upper left hand corner in the opposite bay on the surface. So somebody previously had cut out the pegboard so I can get in there and so there I am putting it back in. And then um, of course I didn't know which wire was which here because I didn't mark it. So later on uh, once I turned the circuit breaker on I figured out which one my line and load was on the time clock. It is required by the energy code if you didn't know that.
So a part of the equipment potential bonding grid, um, there's an NEC requirement to, to electrically ground the pool at four points around the surface. So if you were to look at a clock, it would be required at 10 p.m., 2 p.m., 4 p.m., and then 8 p.m. Uh, that's the best way to describe it. And the most important thing that you do is you cannot use sheet metal screws here. So you got to take this cover off where the plate is <clears throat> down below here and uh, use a nut and bolt setup. And then the lug that you use to attach your ground wire has to be rated for direct burial. So that's pretty important when you do that. Um, sometimes it can be a pain in the neck like this one. I had to dig down like two feet just to get to it. But it was a nice day. And uh, the ground was not wet, so I didn't have to get muddy, anything like that. So uh, it made for an easy installation, but it just takes a little bit of time to do it right. It's worth it. The equipment potential bonding grid must be run between 18 and 24 inches around the circumference of the entire pool at a depth of about 4 to 6 inches. All right, and there's the one spot that we just looked at. And that's how you do it the correct way, just like that. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments. Thanks for watching this video.